welcome to the second episode of the Roundhouse Roundtable. We are excited to have here with us today, Dominique Paste, and she is the marketing manager for Mixed Creative Restaurant, a fast casual restaurant here in downtown Greenwich. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We're very happy to have you here. Thanks. So today we're going to explore exactly how music affects restaurants and dining spaces, but obviously from the business perspective. And you as the manager, I'm sure you have involvement with the music. So we want to get a sense of uh, what that's like from, from your perspective. So before we really dive in, give us a sense of the space. Uh, tell us about, you know, the, the audience, the colors, the light, give us the staffing, give us a sense of the space so we can paint the picture. Yeah, so uh, we're a fast casual brand. We do salads, warm green bowls, cauliflower pizza, so fast casual meaning, um, you know, we're quick service, no dine, um, no table service or anything. So, um, you know, we have a, a definite mixture of an audience from as young as, you know, kids that love our cauliflower pizzas to um, the older generation that comes for their coffee and tea in the morning with a nice little gluten-free muffin in the morning. Um, so it's definitely a mixture of um, demographic. Um, and then the space, you know, it's a gorgeous space, big open windows, uh, marble tables. Uh, we try and have kind of a natural, um, modern feel to it to kind of allude to our uh, healthy, health-forward menu. Mm -hmm. um, and. You know, it's a really gorgeous space, and you just feel you feel bright and airy when you come inside. Yeah. Tell me about the audience. Of course, we've got a lot of private equity uh, businesses around here, and there's a lot of families around here as well. How does do they mix together in the same space at the same time, lunch, breakfast, lunch, and dinner? It is throughout the day. I mean, our lunch crowd is definitely um, business forward. Um, we have a lot of local businesses around here, uh, office crowd, finance, um, and so that's definitely our lunch crowd for breakfast and dinner. I would say it's a little more family, okay. uh, maybe a little bit more of an older crowd. Yeah. Um, so, and the music definitely dictates that, um, you know, depending on the day parts. Speaking of which, yes, you know, talk <laughs> talk to me a little bit about your thoughts about the importance of music and. Is this something that you even really notice when you go into other establishments, be it the mall or, or you know, any other restaurant, any other space? Do you notice it? Is it important? No, of course. It's definitely important. I mean, in the restaurant space, um, you know, people think of food more as touching your four senses. So your sight of the food, touch of the, you know, your environment, um, taste and smell. Um, but you know, your fifth sense of hearing is definitely, um, you know, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with all, with the entire experience. Yeah. Um, so, you know, think about when you're hosting a dinner party, you want that perfect dinner playlist. If whether it's, you know, you're having margaritas and you kind of want it to be a little bit more of a party scene, mm -hmm. um, you're going to have a little more of a high tempo kind of beat um, versus if you're going to have a very, you know, casual um you know, kind of a wine drinking, kind of yeah. easygoing kind of night, sure. you're going to play to the tone of your food. Um, so I think of food kind of as a, you know, you're choosing your wine with your food. That's a good point. And, you know, you want that, depending on what food you're, you know, preparing, you want to have the perfect wine to go with it. And I believe that food, um, that music, also you want to pair your music with your food. Yeah, so there's, I guess, such thing as the right music in a certain space. Uh, and perhaps not so right or the wrong music. So what is right? What does, what, how do you feel? What happens? You know, take the restaurant environment. When it's right, when you nailed, when the music has been nailed, you walk in there, do you, do you know it? Do you feel it? I think you feel it, um, for sure. I mean, there's, you walk into, say, you know, mix. Um, so breakfast, our breakfast day part, you know, you don't want that high tempo beat because you want people to enjoy, relax, sit for a couple of hours, maybe order that extra cup of coffee um, versus lunch where you want to kind of expedite the dining experience and kind of get people out the door because it's a lunch rush. They want to need to get back to work. Mm -hmm. So you kind of up-tempo the beat and kind of push, not push people out, but you kind sure. of just want to just expedite things. Um, yeah. And, you know, for it's dependent on day part, restaurant, cuisine, mm -hmm. everything. So I think there's a lot of different factors that go into um, choosing the perfect music for the space that you have. Sure, sure. So there's, in your case, and I'm sure in others, there's a desired experience that people are sort of, you know, that, that, the, that the establishment 
wants to accomplish. Of course. In at some certain times of the day, it could be turning the table. For restaurants that serve, that have a bar, it could be moving them there, but it's an objective, I exactly. take it, that you're looking to it's accomplish. It's what you want to do, what you, your goal of the of the day part of the hour is, uh, do you want people to continue drinking and order that extra drink, order that extra, uh, you know, tapas or appetizer, or do you really just need them out the door and you want to turn tables and sure. um, kind of just expedite the day? I get it. I get it. So I want to talk a little bit more specific about the music at Mix. And by the way, in full disclosure, I think it's clear that Roundhouse Multimedia now provides the music at Mix. So yes. I just want to make sure, put that out there. Yes. Make sure that we, we <laughs> I'm make doing it. a great job of it. Thank you. So speaking of which, so um, what was the music like there? Uh, obviously, you know, you called us and, um, you know, we sat down and analyzed what you were looking for, but you also had music there prior to bringing in Roundhouse. So give us a sense of, you know, what it was like and, you know, what, what were, they, were they not necessarily doing exactly right? So prior to Roundhouse, we kind of just, it was kind of just a mixture of what we thought was right. You know, we would go into Starbucks in the morning and we kind of just did a play on whatever Starbucks did because it's a coffee house in the morning. We wanted that coffee house feel in the morning. Um, you know, lunchtime, we didn't really, we didn't, we know our crowd, but we didn't understand exactly what music, you know, we couldn't choose just one genre. Um, and that was kind of hard just on our own end of how to do a mixture, what's the right tone, what's the right, um, setting for it. Um, so breakfast was a little easier, but I think our lunchtime crowd was kind of, we didn't really understand mm -hmm. uh, what direction we needed to go in. So, um, you know, you guys did a great job of kind of understanding. Yeah. So the previous provider of your music, I mean, did you go through a process of sitting down with them and, you know, understanding the audience, understanding the day parts, understanding the menu? I mean, was that a part of it? And you, It doesn't sound, I mean, I'm not bashing them by any means, but it doesn't sound like it was very strategic. No, it wasn't. There wasn't, um, you know, in some way, yes, we did. We understood um, the day parts and what need, you know, what tempos were needed. Um, but it was just kind of being able to meld the tempos together and kind of have a fluid throughout the day. It was kind of just, we're jumping from one tempo to the next, and there was no, you know, there was no um, connection between all of it. So yeah. I feel like now there's kind of a connection, and you can't really tell from the morning to the lunch, even though there is a huge change, mm -hmm. you're not hearing that change. It kind of just fluidly goes throughout the day. That's a good point. That's important to have continuity exactly. in, the, in what you're hearing and what you're seeing, um, and consistency as, yeah. as well. Talk to me about the staff. Um, how do they react to the music, um, both before, pre-Roundhouse, and, uh, and now? Do they give feedback? Do they, do they, is there any type of impact on their productivity? Yeah, I think they're a little more enthusiastic, um, a little more upbeat in the morning. We had very, uh, it was very uh, low tempo kind of acoustic vibes in the morning, which isn't a bad thing, mm -hmm. um, but I think having a little bit of a mix of maybe some deep house in there, it kind of just gave a little bit more of a, okay, I'm awake and I'm here yeah, today. Sure. And, um, and, you know, I think that reflected uh, to the customers as well that come in and, um, you know, it just kind of brightens things up around them. Right, right. So as far as the customers go, you have a pretty diverse, or at least two specific audiences that we see consistently in there. And that's, you know, business audience, obviously like literally all around us are in this area. And I talked a little bit about the, the um, family-oriented, um, you know, people coming in sometimes at the same time. Music is obviously so subjective, you know, to to all of us. How is it that you that you find um, we satisfy everyone? Like, how do you even? How do you? How do you? What's your perspective of that? So, and when I say everyone, I mean customers. Um, staff and even the owners. I mean, the owners could be part of a have different interests, part of a different demographic profile, and you know. But you've got to respect the fact that this is, you know, space that they manage and own. Yep. Yeah, so course. how do you manage that? And balance it. Because again, I, we provide the music, but you've got to approve it, and you you know you work with these folks. Yeah, I would say it's just over time, just learning um, your audience throughout the day and. 
you know, it's not just you walk in, you hear this one song, and you say, I don't like this song on this playlist. I don't, you know, this is not a, this is not good for us. Um, it's kind of just seeing throughout the week. I know you do, you know, it's a playlist that goes over a four or five day span. Um, so there's a ton of variety. And I think that, I think that, uh, I don't know, just it's, I'm drawing a blank on this one. Well, is it, is, I mean, is it, it's, uh, it's which quite, tells, challenge, which, which it's quite challenging, it's, yes. Yeah, it tells me it's challenging. I, I get it. And that's kind of, that's why we bring it up, because it's not something that can be ignored. I mean, this is something that we have to deal with in working with our partners. We know that, again, staff is important. They're on the front line. Yeah. All right. So they've got to stay enthusiastic and motivated, and they're always there. Owners come and go. Customers come and go. Staff is always there, so they're important. But again, we understand when the when that owner comes in there, um, if it's something that they just completely can't relate to, does that require you uh, or someone else to explain that? But our customers do. Yeah. So we definitely, you know, we have to just kind of explain, yes, that you know this is the vibe of our of our restaurant, these mm -hmm. are, you know, unfortunately, you know, maybe you don't like, you don't personally like the up-tempo beat, um, but it goes with the flow of the restaurant. During our lunch, it kind of expedites, and also people eat to the beat. So if you want to, if, you know, you need to get out, people are eating quick during lunch, and they're ready to get out, whereas breakfast, you really do want people to sit. You want mm -hmm. people, and now if you come in the morning, and you will hear that difference. If you come at dinner, you will hear that difference, um, but it's really just alluding to the different day parts, really, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, you know, we do want to please, we want to please everyone. Sure. We want to make sure everyone's very comfortable in the space that they're in, because music really does affect it, yeah. you know, affect your dining experience. So. Absolutely, um, and what I will say, um, although we don't, you know, share too much of this with you unless we see an issue. But when we go in there, we look closely at the uh, the customers as well as the staff. And uh, I've I've seen the owner come and go as well. And as long as you know there there's a little bit of a foot tap, and as long as you know that it's not in any way uh, intrusive yeah. to the to their experience, um, I think we're doing a good job. I can agree. Do with you have Do you have a favorite uh, time? time of the day, which, again, gets to a certain playlist and type of music that's being played? Um, you know, I, I like it all. I mean, I sit, so personally, when I come in in the morning, um, I sit down in the restaurant and, you know, I have my cup of tea, a little breakfast, and it is such soothing, great music to listen to, and it kind of wakes me up, but also focuses, it kind of focuses me for the day. Um, so I would say morning is probably my favorite um, time of day to kind of relax and um, get ready for my day there and listening to the music, it really does help. Um, and I, I notice a huge difference from what we played before to what we currently have now. So That's good to hear. That's very good to hear. So um, this is the part of the show we, we sort of dive a little bit deeper into your experience, your personal experiences with, with music. So um, is there any moment, any uh, artist, any, I don't know, experience, concert, Anything that you can recall, we've, and when we ask this question, we get, it's, it's wide open, it could, it could have been last week, it could have been and during your childhood, where music sort of just touched you in a memorable way, and you, and you recall, you can like take yourself back there and recall. Could be anything, could, be, could have been an artist that you met, could have been a concert, whatever. Uh, I mean, there's a lot, honestly, music is a huge part of my life and I think everyone's life. Give us like your best, like like that one that you just love telling, you tell a story over and over, you know. I don't know if it's more of a story, more of a memory, I would say. Um, I grew up, my father plays, um, he's a great guitarist. Um, so, you know, I grew up with him jamming out and uh, just being able to listen to him and see how enthusiastic he was about playing and, I think that was just, you know, a really great memory that I always have. And he still, to this day, plays, and, you know, it's really great. Um, a concert recently that I went to, um, I have a friend, actually, I just saw her perform at the Bowery in the city, and she did a fantastic job. Her name is Sky Verbs, um, and, you know, she's a great lyricist and everything, and that was my first time uh, really seeing her perform live. Mm -hmm. um, in front of a larger audience, and she just knocked it out of the park, and I was just so proud, and it was just um, such a really, it was a really great experience. 
That's cool. That's cool. And I, and I love the story about you and your dad, you know, because, you know, that's, that's kind of a, it's an emotional moment that, you know, you're taken back to. I, you know, one of the other shows, I, I had a similar situation where it wasn't so much a song, it wasn't so much an album, um, but it was more so a feeling that I got when I got into my grandmother's car who only played AM radio. So all those, yes. Barry Manilow, <laughs> all those songs. But, um, but one of the experiences that I just, and was actually just recently talking to the team here about was, uh, and I kind of forgot about this, um, my early like undergraduate college concert experience, I saw two concerts um, that were, again, when you're in the moment, you don't even realize that they're literally instant, you know, classic, legendary yeah. shows. They're just, you're in the moment. Um, but one was Purple Rain oh, with, wow. with Prince. Yeah. And again, Purple Rain was just hot. The whole album, Prince was hot. And we saw it twice in Atlanta where I was in school. And then we also um, travel to their next stop in Birmingham and saw it another two times, okay? And the other one was Synchronicity, um, The Police. I, I don't know if you're yep. familiar with uh, that particular album, that particular tour, but that was their last tour performing together before they did reunion tours and everything. But again, um, I saw, we saw it five times. Wow. <laughs> and, and then, but who knew yeah. that, you know, I mean, Sting, of, of course, uh, is, I mean, it might be even, is it Sir Sting? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but um, so anyway, those were concert experiences that I just, I'll, I'll just never, ever, ever forget. Yeah, very powerful. Now, do you sing? Do you play? Oh, God, any, no, you don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, we're not going to make you sing, but I was just curious, I mean, with a, with a dad that was a rocker like that, I mean, do you... I mean, I'll sing. No one wants to hear me, but I'll definitely sing. <laughs> so, okay, so you're one of those, like, close the door, yeah. like, getting ready. Humming, exactly. You know? I'm in the car, belting out a tune, but I don't want to roll that window down. <laughs> I, I hear you. I hear you. So um, so what's next at, at Mix? Any Anything... Um, you know, feedback that you're, you're hearing from anyone regarding the music, uh, at, at, you know, because we like to keep things fresh and this is not to put you on the spot in terms of, you know, uh, a, a um, status report or evaluation or anything, but we're just, just curious, you know, what, what, what are you thinking? Is it, can the environment withstand a different type of music within a different season? Um, okay, winter's coming. Holiday seasons are coming. Um, are you guys thinking you might want some groovy holiday music. Of course, you have to get everyone into the spirit. Wherever you go, there's gonna be Christmas music playing. And, um, but no, I mean, honestly, right now it's, you know, no comments are sometimes the best comments. So it sounds like, or it feels like that everyone uh, really likes the vibe and, you know, people that sit and do dine in, um, you know, tend to sit a little longer, I think. Yeah. Um, and, you know, our breakfast, we just, you know, we're rolling out a new breakfast menu and, you know, we, do, we are getting more people that kind of do want to sit down and enjoy a cup of coffee before they go into work or, um, you know, before they start their day. So I think, um, you know, the music is definitely really helping that because, um, you guys don't play. What I really love that you guys don't do is you have a couple of, you know, top 40 hits in there, but it's very it's sprinkled very it's lightly heavy. in. Um, and, you know, music kind of gives a, a deception of time. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel like when you hear these top 40 songs and you hear them over and over again, you can kind of gauge how long that you've been sitting there for. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you hear a song that, you know, you don't know, and you keep hearing all these undiscerning songs, you just, you don't really know how long you've been sitting there. You just know that you're enjoying your time and, you know, time flies when you're having fun, so. Yeah, yeah, ve very strategic approach because yes. on one hand, y you have to have those. Yeah. You know, people, people, people love them, at, yeah. at some point in time, you just kind of want to hear a top 40. They're hits for a reason. They're hits, <laughs> they're hits for a reason, absolutely, but by the same token, we, um, we, we take a, a lot of time in making sure there's just not too much. Yeah. So bringing us up to today, what's the number one song on your personal playlist? It doesn't have to be one. could be an album, but just like, like today, right now. If today, we... right now, that I've been playing over and over again, I don't know if you've heard of the artist Hosier. 
Um, Any, anyone? Anyone? Yeah. Anyone? Anyone? Uh, yeah? Okay. Um, Movement. It's on his new album, and it's a fantastic song. And, I mean, his voice is just, uh, it's in a very emotional album. And um, But just, I can play that song over and over again, and I'm just not getting sick of it. Really? Yeah. All right. So I think I'm going to have to do some download, downloading, doing some I checking on that. All right. <laughs> So um, for me, um, I got to tell you that I, I don't necessarily have one specific. Um, so I have uh, a 16-year-old son. My older daughters are out of the house. And every now and, now and then he's got his phone linked to the car. He likes to just make the selection. And, and I grew up on rap music, um, huge hip-hop fan. But um, he's been, lately he's been playing... Um, Chance the Rapper. Nice. And uh, so anyway, I just have kind of fallen in love with the, the, his latest project. And uh, I try to stay um, pretty e eclectic when it comes to my choice of music. I've got, if you look at my collection, it's got a little bit of everything. Um, my wife's a singer, but I'm the enthusiast. Really? Yes. yes wow. she's, a, she's a singer. Um, you may have heard her sing before because she sung on TV commercials and oh, radio really? commercials. But I'm the enthusiast. I'm the one with the library. Yeah. And so uh, sometimes it's hard for me to zero in. But yeah, Chance the Rapper is sort of what I'm listening to these days. I mean, it definitely depends on the mood, the day. You know, there's I, I listen to, you know, my music genres are across the board. I can listen to anything, but it really depends on, you know, my mood and what's going on for the day. That's fantastic. Um, so I thought I'd ask you a question. Um, so, okay. All right. <laughs> so how difficult is it since every restaurant, every you know business is so different? Um, you know, different demographics, different uh, you know vibes of the restaurant. How difficult is it to understand that brand and the feel of yeah. um, you know what they're going for and how you know what's your process on that? Yeah, that's that's actually a great question because we pride ourselves on making sure that we look at everything, you know? So when we go into a space, we consider, and this was the case with your space as well, uh, we consider how much light comes in. We consider, is it a rug um, or some type of hardwood or f flooring? The lighting. Um, we even ask to review the menu of uh, a place, if it's a restaurant, of course. Uh, then of course, it's the demographic profile of your audience uh, at different times of day and what you want the net impression to be. What do you want them to leave with, you know? So w once we collect all that information, we do what's called a creative brief. And that brief basically um, takes all the information we've gathered and based on that information, we develop what is sort of a preliminary um, playlist um, with some sample music that we provide when we then give that back to you to get a sense of, you know, well, this is the direction we're going in. Do, do we feel like, and we don't always nail it the first time, and that's part of the process. Yeah. But we got to get some feedback from you, and we let you know these are the things we considered, and here's where we think you are in the, in the morning hours, and here's where we think you are at lunch and then dinner. Um, and then and that goes back and forth a couple of times, and then we decide on what the playlist will be moving forward. And we have our team then, now that we know, we sort of know what the, um, you know, the approach is going to be. Um, we don't really need to do that anymore. But every, as you said, every place is different. Every, you know, some people are going to have darker leather chairs and some people are going to have more light coming in. And some people are going to have very, very different menus. So that's a great question. And, and I'll tell you, it's one of the, one of the biggest challenges, but because many of our competitive um, providers out there don't go to those lengths, it's something that we're very proud of. Yeah, and I, you know, everything changes so seasonally, so I feel like this is always just a work in progress, and you know, sometimes brands kind of want to do a you know, rebranding on themselves, and now you need to learn you know, what that rebranding is and how that's going to affect the music. So I'm sure it's just a continuous work in progress that, with you guys. So. That, that's absolutely right. That's another point about it, because you're, you're right. Things change. Um, the core changes. Yeah. Management changes. 
and occasionally the demographic profile changes. So you're absolutely right. We, it's a iterative process, and we're never married to you know what we decide on, knowing that there could be changes along the way. So actually, again, great questions. So we're just about to close out. Before we do so, we always want to remind our viewers to not to forget to rate, to share, and listen to us on your local podcasts. And uh, we'll be back with another episode soon.